All right, so this is the GoTrax G3 electric scooter. And this particular scooter boasts a charge time of four to five hours. It has a 300 watt motor, tops out at 15 and a half miles an hour, and gets roughly a 12 to 18 mile range. Well guys, could it be this easy? Literally all I did is took the packaging off and I just pushed this handlebar onto the tiller and then from there it's just these four screws two in this side and two in this side so let's get those put in one thing i like too is they do have a thread locker on these that's always good to see Well, you guys already know the best part. Pulling these off. All right, so we've got that one. And then there's also one over the headlight. Pretty cool. What I really like about this right off the bat is how the brake cable goes right into the tiller. And also this mechanism seems very sturdy. I can already tell there's not a lot of flex at all in this which is awesome um and then this is another thing i noticed right away this has a little carabiner style clip and this is metal not plastic so that's already telling me this is going to be able to hold some stuff which is awesome so let's go ahead i've got a power button and a minus and plus let's hold down the power oh look at that and I'm thinking it's just a bunch of zeros here. Okay, and then you just double tap when you have your passcode in. And there you go, look at that. We got some miles displayed. We actually start off with a full battery, but I am gonna charge it anyway. So let's just see, if we hit the plus button, it takes us to level two. If we hit plus again. All right, so the plus and minus on the main screen just alternate between uh, level one and level two. If we have power one time, what do we get? Nothing. What if we hold down the power? Turns it off. Okay, so right away, keep the passcode simple. Double tap. And we got our miles there. And let's just see here. All right, so this will be a kick to start or push to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the instructions, and I'm going to get this thing charged. We also have a bell here, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. Brake is working right out of the gate. It's got a good amount of tension on it. So, yeah, we'll get this thing going and try it out. All right, guys, so the more I'm looking at this, the more things I'm seeing that I really like. Um, it does charge at the bottom. It has a little waterproof cover, um, which is nice. The other thing that I noticed is this is charging over two times faster than the uh, smaller Go Tracks, the Rival, um, which is really, really cool. So we should get some fast charge times. The other thing that I noticed that's really awesome is this has an actual brake light and a reflector. So that's neat. And the third awesome thing that I just found is that this thing also has a built-in lock. How cool is that? All right, guys, so we are gonna do my very first ride on this. All I've done is turn it on to this point. All right, so we got our kickstand and we are gonna hit our power button. We're gonna hold that down. Put in our super secure password. We're going to start off in level one. And again, this is a push to start. We're just going to see how it does. So one big difference I can notice immediately is just how smooth this throttle is. Another thing too, is anytime you're using a new device for the very first time, 
make sure to go slow at first just to make sure that everything is fastened in correctly from the factory. So after we go slow for a little bit, then we'll speed it up. And it is in miles per hour, and we are maxed at nine and a half on speed one. And the cruise control clicked in, screen flashed. Tap the throttle again to disengage. And we are going up a fairly steep hill here. This is a 300 watt motor. And in speed one, it is doing it at nine and a half miles an hour easily. Clicked in the cruise. And it is effortless here going up this hill. One other thing I was gonna mention is I never do range tests on the first battery charge. I think with every battery, it's good to cycle it at least a few times before taking it on a full range test. Um, it just seems like you get more range like you know, the last scooter I reviewed, the GoTrax Rival, it dropped the bar of battery after a few blocks on the very first charge. And after that, I used it a little bit. I let it charge overnight and it got a lot better range. Again, you can either click the brake or the throttle. All right, we got some cars coming. What I'm gonna do now, and when you're not moving, it's giving you miles. So we're at 0.3 miles. I hit the plus button to go into level two. We are in level two now. And top speed is 15.5. The other thing I've noticed too on this is the brakes are extremely smooth. They're not jerky at all. kind of a quick stop here. Now, one thing to note too, is on the website, this says that it has the electromagnetic braking. So that means not only is it stopping with the brakes, but it also is using the motor to stop it. And I specifically went this way for a reason. We've got a very big hill that we're gonna try and climb. And we're gonna see how that 300 watt motor does. Wow guys, I'm loving this scooter. This thing is just awesome. cruising at 13 miles an hour, it's like butter. And as soon as I get comfortable with it, throw a helmet on, we'll be buzzing along at 15 and a half, no problem. These grips are extremely grippy. I really like that. All right, so here's the start of our uphill and I'm gonna go full throttle. So we're at 14, crew should engage here. Steep hill, steep hill, let's go. So we're at 10.
And again, there's a lot of hoverboards that have a hard time making it up a hill like this. We're up to 11, it's actually gaining speed now. 11 and a half, 12. Still four bars even going up the steep hill. Okay, now we're leveling off. I'm gonna click the cruise off. We got a squirrel playing Russian roulette. Yeah, this is very smooth, guys. This is just awesome. So here's what the brake lights look like. So even with the headlights off, you do get a brake light. So here's the brake applied. So it'll flash the entire time the brake is applied. And with the headlight on, you get a steady light, which hopefully you can see. And even with the headlight on when you brake, it does flash. And here is that headlight, very bright. And it also has a reflector below it. All right, guys, a little mid-ride update. Uh, this thing is awesome. 3.2 miles so far, still four bars, even going up steep hills. Uh, that battery has not dropped at all yet. Um, and we'll do a little belt test. Very loud. All right, so now we are in at 5.2 miles. We did drop one bar of battery. I am doing quite a bit of hills here, but this thing is just doing awesome. So I just got back from a five and a half mile ride and the hub motor is measuring 100 degrees. So, I mean, it gets warm. I had a lot of really steep hills. Um, but nothing extreme. Thought I'd also mention the battery, as you can see here, um, it is measuring 87 degrees after, you know, a five and a half mile ride going pretty fast. All right, so we are 7.4 miles in, still only used one bar of battery, which is just amazing. Um, I'm gonna turn it off, so to turn it off, you just press and hold the power button. Something interesting I just found out, so is if you leave it and somebody walks up to it, and they're like, oh, shoot, you have to put a passcode in. I'm just gonna start walking away with it. An alarm starts going off. So that's kind of a neat feature. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Double tap and it's gone. All right, now another thing I'm gonna try and show you one-handed here is how you'd go ahead and lock this up. So you just pull this out and you're gonna wind it around something like this and then just push it into this hole here. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure to remember to turn these so they're not right on your lock. And that way, if anybody tries to steal this, that's what it's gonna look like. So that's pretty neat. So you kind of have a redundant system. You've got this, even if somebody cuts this, they're not gonna be able to break into this without that three digit passcode. So obviously with GoTrack, security was something that uh, was important to them and it's important to us as consumers. So I really appreciate that feature. One thing important to note is GoTrax recommends filling these tires to 50 PSI and they do give you a little adapter piece to screw on. And on this particular model, it is a rear hub motor, rear wheel drive, rear brakes. So the front is for steering only. Um, and I think I actually prefer the way the rear wheel drive feels. So one thing that's a little different from some of the other GoTrax models, as I'll show you, is when you are folding this up, you can still use the kickstand. Other models, the whole front end drops down. This one you can leave it as is, so I'll display that for you now. Lift up on this release. And then there's a little carabiner latch, and that's it. All right, so... We are off, and tonight I'm actually not going to use uh, my extra headlamp. I'm just going to use the light that comes on this so you get a good idea of exactly what this will be like for you. Yep, 
Yeah, already I feel like the visibility is going to be a lot better uh, for other cars seeing me from the front and the back. The screen is really easy to see at night. Yeah, I could definitely, definitely see using this for nighttime commutes. This is really nice. Yeah, so there's a good example. That car was actually more on the right side of the road and he did see my headlight and moved over a little bit. So it's perfect. All right, and there we go. So I'm gonna hop off here. And again, there's our tail light. But just look at how good of a view. That distance that that light is, is perfect. I love the way they have that aimed. And this is also perfect because we're almost exactly at 10 miles and used half of the battery. So, loving that as well. All right, so I was curious to see how this would look at night. So let's fire it up. And wow, that's a really bright headlight, first of all. So I'll back up so you can see. It does project the light actually pretty far, which is great for seeing bumps. And then there's the tail light. So that tail light is pretty bright. Um, and if we go ahead and try the brake here. Yeah, it's definitely a, a nice nighttime mode. I'll back up enough here. That's what it looks like. And I'm also really liking how bright this screen is. So clear and easy to see. Love that. All right, so I've been riding this thing a lot today and it is time to charge it up. And what's pretty cool is if we go to Watts, this thing charges, if you can see it, at about 90 Watts when it fully peaks. Um, so this is a fast charger and just kind of a word to the wise, this does heat up. So in this case, I don't have it right on my carpet. I put it on a little plastic bucket. Um, so that does heat up as it goes. This light does turn off and turn green a little bit early. So if you want to trickle charge it all the way to 100%, I would leave this um, plugged in for at least an hour after that light turns green just to get it fully charged. All right, so I'm ending my trip right there. We finished at 9.3 miles and we actually ended on three bars. As you can see there, we have three bars of battery remaining, 9.3 miles. And my watch is telling me that we averaged a speed of 9.8 miles an hour, which is pretty good given I was stopping to demonstrate different things. I think it easily probably averaged 12 to 15 miles an hour, no problem. The thing I'm most impressed with is the battery life. The fact that I'm almost 10 miles into this trip and only used 25% of the battery um, we are going to do a full range test after I cycle the battery a few times. And um, <laughs> the part that really makes me that much more impressed is that, well, random bug, is that uh, I was doing a lot of hills at full throttle. So I thought for sure this thing would be more depleted than it is. So very, very impressed. 